Hello, and welcome to Music for All, a podcast brought to you by the Coalition for Music Education in Canada. My name is Christina Acton, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm currently a Master of Music student at Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador. I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Olive McPhail today. Olive, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm so good. I'm I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm raring to go. Yes, me too. I'm I'm ready. <laughs> Let's talk some music education. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, before we dive into, I guess the the more thinker questions, um, I want to know a bit more about you. Please tell us a bit about yourself. So my name's Olive McPhail. Uh, my pronouns are they them. I come from Prince Edward Island. I'm a music educator here on PEI and a tuba player. So I'm entering my first year of my Master's of Music in Performance and Pedagogy at Memorial University as well. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so exciting. Um, so have you been doing, did you just recently finish your, your Bachelor of Education or did you take some time between that and the Master's to teach in PEI? I just finished back in May. So I finished my final teaching uh, placement back like in the middle of June. And then we're going straight for it, going straight for the master's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's good to dive right in. Yeah. Yeah. I was considering taking a year to teach and get my get my feet wet in the public school system here on PEI. But then I decided May as well keep the tuba train rolling and yeah. uh, <laughs> and go study. I'm not quite done learning about tuba yet. So uh, yeah, you go study with, with the cool people up in Newfoundland. Well, you know I have to bring it up and I may as well do it early. Um, clearly a lot of people are enjoying your tuba playing because you were recently on CBC's Classical Musician 30 Under 30 list. Yeah, <laughs> it- I was so uh, taken aback by by seeing that. I, I've known probably since back at the beginning of May is when I found out and just had to keep it under wraps until until now. Now everybody can know and everybody sees it. Yeah. I, I will let you know right now. It was definitely a big buzz amongst the Mun Masters students when the list popped up. And we were all like, oh my God, they're coming here. <laughs> a celebrity coming here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't. I... <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I'm not all that, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I hope you guys aren't disappointed when you see me and I'm just like normal. Never. <laughs> we can never be. <laughs> um, well, let's, let's take it back. Let's rewind a little bit. Um, what role did music play in your life as you were growing up? Well, nobody else in my family or my extended family is a musician. Um, Nobody really in my family plays a whole lot of music for fun. My grandfather did. Uh, and my, you know, of course, my mom was in band growing up and everything as well. So uh, it took a lot of convincing, I got to say, to uh, to get a lot of music into my life. So I kind of started with step dancing when I was a kid. I started with as a young fiddle player. Um, I played a little bit of piano before, but I really enjoyed the fiddle and step dancing and the Gaelic Scottish culture of it all. Uh, so that's one of that was my first passion in music was with um, Gaelic song and and Gaelic uh, culture in general. So I spent a lot of summers in uh, Cape Breton uh, doing um, summer camps at the Gaelic College there, uh, learning the language and everything like that as well, and and taking wow. part in that kind of cultural stuff. So that was kind of like my first like hook into music, really, per se. Um, and then I started band in grade seven. Uh, I started playing tuba when I was about 12, I think I was 12. Yeah, I would have been. Um, and I started picking up a few other things on my own. I picked up a guitar and ukulele and mandolin and my violin, my fiddle career kind of slowly turned into a violin career as I got more into the classical side of things as well. And I was fully convinced I was going to be a violin player up until probably like grade 11. Wow. And then I was like, you know what, I, I took this trip, I did a student exchange program to Quebec um, when I was in 11th grade to improve my French out there. And when I was there, that band program 
um, in Remus Guy at Ecole Polybert is just like top notch, incredible. Uh, and that's where I really was like, Tuba is it. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> so I decided to pursue Tuba instead. And I'm really glad I did. <laughs> it, yeah. It seemed to work out. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. <laughs> Do you still play much like violin or fiddle or any of the other many instruments you just mentioned that you play? <laughs> I do sometimes. I'll pick it out, uh, pick it up and, and play a few tunes that I know from memory. Um, but most of what I've been doing lately and over the past few years is taking fiddle tunes that I used to play or new fiddle tunes that I haven't played before and playing them on tuba instead. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you think that like the different, this might be a little bit of a cheesy question, um, but the different music things that you did growing up, did you find that it had much of like a personal benefit or a mental or physical health benefit? Oh, definitely like a big mental health benefit. Like I, I, I don't know, like I really felt uplifted by music as a child for sure. And I, and specifically being in music class like I've always wanted to be a music teacher ever since I was probably in like grade four five six just because like the music classroom was just such a safe space for me and I felt like so that I could just creatively let go in that way and kind of show my skills in a way that I couldn't in the quote unquote regular classroom I guess mm -hmm. um so yeah I I would say it had like a big benefit on my mental health growing up and and just my creative juices flowing in general yeah that's awesome that's really great I know um you you mentioned about the the moment where tuba playing really clicked for you is the thing you wanted to do for your undergrad um but was there a moment as you were growing up or even during your undergrad where you really were like oh, okay music is going to be at least part of my career yeah, definitely. So like, I've kind of always so first of all, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I just I love being in a learning space in, in a space where the ball is always rolling. We're always constantly learning. We're always doing that spiral curriculum kind of thing going on. So mm. like, you know, the the big concepts that carry from kindergarten all the way to grade 12, all the way through your undergrad, all the way through your lifetime really and always being in that kind of constantly learning mode um and then it was just my love for music and knowing that that was possible you know what I mean knowing that these two passions of mine could really uh merge and collide in a really really beautiful way mm -hmm. um that benefits way more people than just myself you know yeah that's wonderful I love that was there a, a specific reason or any specific reasons that you were drawn to uh, PEI or UPEI and or to MUND? Well, I grew up on PEI. Uh, so I've lived here in the same house like my whole life until I moved out during my undergrad, of course. Um, but the support system for music teachers on PEI is incredible. Um, it is like such a tight knit network of teachers that you know, you can post on Facebook, like, hey, does anybody have a good warm up resource? And you'll get like 10 just personally messaged to you. Um, and, you know, everybody's always willing to lend a helping hand. Um, it's, I find it very beautiful that on PEI, every single school has a band program. Um, wow. And every single school has all of the support systems in place to have a successful program. Um, and there's always people working on the curriculum. There's always people looking to improve the situation, even though it's it's pretty good, you know, already yeah. as is. So that's kind of why I was drawn to teaching specifically music on PEI here. So uh, when I started at UPEI, there was a tuba professor there. His name is uh, Dr. Gregory Irvin. Um, and he's a great, just, a great guy um and uh he retired after my first year and then I got um Dale Sorensen as my professor Dale and I love Dale we love <laughs> Dale so much like every lesson since then was like my comedy hour like I would just <laughs> always be leaving my lessons laughing and feeling really good and everything like that 
Um, so I was more drawn to UPEI's, um, initially I was more drawn to UPEI's uh, combo music and education degree um, and the specific music education part. So instead of doing like one music degree and then an education degree separately, um, it's all kind of concurrent and combined. So I started my education courses in like my third year and we were able to take courses like instead of taking courses like English methods or social studies methods that I would in an education degree, I was taking woodwind methods, uh, jazz techniques, things like that, like how to teach woodwinds, how to teach jazz, how to teach percussion and how to teach choral and everything like that as well. Um, so That's it was great. really, really nice to have that kind of really specific education and, and I guess that's why a lot of music teachers who study music education at UPEI stay on PEI um, and that's how a lot of our programs across schools stay very similar and with a very equitable kind of amount of resources and teaching and everything like that too yeah wow that is great that is so cool <laughs> I chose MUN because Dr. Bulmer is there She's incredible. I was looking at like ev everybody else's bios as far as looking for professors to learn from. And as soon as I saw Dr. Bulmer's, I was like, this is it. This is it, definitely. Um, certified yoga instructor and professional tuba player. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? What an what a <laughs> amazing combo. A great combo. Like uh, just the concept of like using mindfulness and body techniques whenever you're playing tuba, that really resonated with me. I uh, love the Atlantic vibe as well. So I'm really looking forward to that when I'm coming up tonight as well. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so great. I have to tell you, um, so when I was at Mount Allison, I think Dale overlapped with my first year at Mount Allison. I'm not a brass player um, by any means. I know nothing about brass aside from I enjoy watching my friends play it. Um, but I had a lot of friends in the brass studio and they all adored Dale uh, and sang yeah. his praises. And I always remember he gave a concert called Romance, where the bit was every single piece was was called Romance. It was just, you know, <laughs> by a different composer. And so he got yeah. about halfway through the like 45 minute program and went. <laughs> so um, this next one's called Romance. <laughs> <laughs> His so dry funny. sense of humor gets me every single time. <laughs> oh, it's too good. Too good. Yeah. But uh, what a guy. Uh, I miss him. That was great. <laughs> That's. Uh, I'm glad you had such a great time with him. Oh my gosh. Like, uh, I love that guy so much. I can't even tell you like how much he has influenced like my path as a musician. Because, you know, I originally went into my undergrad just being like, hey, I'm going to play tuba. I'm going to get my music education degree and I'm going to start teaching band and that's the plan. And then as soon as I started learning from Dale, I got like way better than I thought I would <laughs> just because it was such a positive environment and I wanted to play so much. So I don't know. I, I really credit a lot of stuff to him as far as how motivated I became throughout my degree, just because he's so awesome. It's so great. <laughs> So do you think where your next big thing is you're going to be starting this master's in performance and pedagogy is the hope to be continuing to do more and more tuba performance as part of the career as well as teaching? Yeah, like I'd like it to kind of be side by side for sure. Like I, I really want to be a good, solid tuba player who is playing often. Um, and But I also want to be teaching in the public school system at the same time and, or teaching in general. Um, so definitely, yes, like the performance and the teaching are at equal footing at this point now. Yeah. Cool. That's so awesome. Um, I guess sort of bouncing off of that. So what's like one part of either your career right now or your studies you've just done or your studies that you're about to do that you're like the most excited to talk about? I don't even know. It's just like so many new things happening right now, like big career and life changes have been happening for me over the past year or so. Um, a lot more success in my tuba playing as well. Um, I just finished doing National Music Festival, the Federation of Canadian Music Festivals, National Music Festival. That one is a mouthful. Um, but 
I just placed first in brass, um, in the brass category with them. Wow. And uh, I've been doing this music festival for a long time. Like I used to do it when I played violin when I was itty bitty. Um, and I think this is my last year doing it. Wow. I like I could keep on doing it through my, throughout my masters. I think the age cap is like twenty eight or something like that. But I think this is my I think this is my last go at it. You know what I mean? Just kind of to mark the territory between like my undergrad stuff and my graduate stuff. You know what I mean? Start doing more research, more playing outside of competitions and festivals, and more work in the community you know Mm -hmm. yeah wow that's really cool and congratulations that's amazing thank you I appreciate that (laughs) do you have um sorry if this is a bit of a daunting question as an incoming grad student (laughs) but do you have even just like vague inklings of stuff that you might want to research as a grad student uh I don't even know I like I would love to dive deeper into um kind of what we were touching on before I would love to dive deeper into Celtic music on tuba or like generally folk song on tuba um I love Ray Fawn Williams six studies in English folk song I think that's like a beautiful piece um oh, yeah and I'd love to I'm not a composer by any means <laughs> and I'm not like a recorder I'm like strictly like education performance kind of person like I have like next to no experience doing anything else outside of that so I would love to kind of dive deeper work collaboratively with other people on creating a suite a Scottish folk song suite or something like that eventually and just doing something to do with the Maritimes and Newfoundland and stuff like that diving deeper into that kind of thing in general yeah that's awesome that's really cool (laughs) some kind of creative project you know yeah Yeah. no that's awesome we had um every year Newfoundland does uh the newfound music symposium where it's like research and new music performances and it's very fun um and this past year I don't know if you know the like local musician Rosemary Lawton um but she did a presentation on like she published this whole book of arrangements of Newfoundland folk songs specifically about cool women um (laughs) which is a bad way of describing it but it's like you know folk songs where like the woman is like the heroine or the main character outside of like being a love interest um and it was really cool it was a great like performance and research lecture um that's really cool and yeah yeah Yeah. there's a really cool resource from Cape Breton University um where you can go on and they have several different sections of historical music that was recorded like years and years and years ago. And somebody went through and transcribed a lot of it as well. Um, And it's Acadian music, Mi'kmaq music, and uh, Gaelic music as well. And you can just kind of scroll through anything that you want, click on a song, and it'll show you all the lyrics, the translations, and then the transcription of it as well. And the old, old, old recording. Anyways, I did a project um, for my Canadian women in the 19th century um, class, like a couple semesters ago, I think. And it was all just like going through all of these resources and picking and choosing some of the stuff that I really like. Um, And a lot of it had to do with like cool ladies talking about their guys who are (laughs) off on the coal mines, like, (laughs) you know? my community has been destroyed by capitalism. Like, what am I going to do? You know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> timeless <laughs> things like that. <laughs> yes. I, timeless, timeless. Timeless, really. always relevant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's okay for me to say that. I can make a judgment yeah. call in the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Um, well, I want to do one, uh, I guess, sort of lighter one before we get into the real thinkers um okay. and that's just purely out of curiosity what are you listening to right now what musicians are you into right now I'm really into Big Feet right now and their um lead band singer Adriana Lenker uh it's it's kind of like bulky indie kind of stuff I I don't even know how to describe it it's very it, it definitely has some folk influence in it as well um, there are some amazing guitar players in that group as well. So that's 
the kind of thing that I've been obsessed with as far as my regular music that I'm listening to. Um, as far as uh, Cuba music or just like classical music in general, um, I have been obsessed with this recording of Debussy's Girl with the Flaxen Hair for Ooh. trombone and harp. And, or it's also trombone and harp. And it's uh, Joe Alessi's recording of it on like, it's, I think the album's called Trombone Mastics or like, it's something with like gymnastics and trombone. I don't even know. But Amazing. I'm in love with that recording so much. I've been listening to it for the past few years, but it's, I'm always obsessed with it. Yeah. That's so cool. Wow. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. It's pretty niche, my interest, I gotta say. But <laughs> I mean, hey, yesterday my girlfriend and some friends and I were driving back from the beach and we were listening to David Tennant narrating a jazz arrangement of Peter and the Wolf. Sometimes you gotta get into those niche <laughs> interests. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Great recording, by the way. <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> You'll have to link that one to me yeah. after this. Link it to me. <laughs> um, well, I feel like you're you're in a good spot as as somebody who grew up in PEI to to come from the perspective of somebody living in a place where music education actually seems to be respected um, and relatively <laughs> accessible. Um, but how do you think we as like a you know society of Atlantic Canadians Canadians people in general? Um, can make music education and music making more accessible to young people? So something that um, the PEI, like that the PEI music, or bleh, let me rephrase, a new curriculum for music on PEI just came out and it's just starting to be implemented in September. And it's basically moving away from the idea that band is the only kind of program you can have. So from what I understand in Newfoundland, and this isn't always just curriculum is different than what actually happens in the classroom, right? So this isn't yeah. always carried out in the classroom. But from what I looked at, at in the Newfoundland curriculum, there are also several streams that you can take. So you mm -hmm. can do like choral streams, folk music streams, guitar, that kind of thing. Um, and we've taken a similar direction here in PEI, but not so many streams um so but just general themes that you can take depending on what your school and what your students want to do and what your school offers like if you have band instruments at your school or not and things like that so um the new curriculum includes three streams stomp which is styles of popular music um performance and uh choral and dance as well so styles of popular music in the school public school system has been blowing up in in PEI specifically in Summerside. Um, this wonderful teacher named Krista Bryson um, kind of founded this styles of popular music performance program, um, and now it's getting so big that she decided to take on another music teacher at that school. So now there's two wow. music teachers at the school one doing band and one doing styles of popular music performance. So um, mind you, she did kind of go down from 100% to 50% um, just mm. to kind of take a break and let that program build. But they're fully expecting that program to grow even more in numbers. I have no doubt. Year. Yeah. And we have a great streamline here to Holland College uh, with their um, SOFA program, um, School of Performing Arts program there. And they have a straight straight connection to Berkeley as well. So wow. there's like <laughs> a really good streamline going yeah. on right now. Um, so so it's like really kind of a streamline from band into UPEI music and a streamline from styles of popular music into um, the School of Performing Arts at Holland College as well. So kind of, I guess, to round about back to the question that you asked in the first place, <laughs> um, I guess something that we can do is create those professional paths you know um we create it in every other subject in the school system you know you teach biology at school uh it's offered at a post-secondary institution near you um and then that could lead to med school or it could lead to marine biology or other things like that right 
Um, but we don't always have that kind of thing put in place for music. Mm -hmm. We don't always plan for our students to become lifelong musicians, whether they take it to the post-secondary level and study it professionally or not. But having those things in place for, for students to thrive past the school system is definitely like having it all put in place and almost laid out for them, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is kind of what we had for music teachers here with the Bachelor of Music Education here as well. Kind of encouraging more people to study Bachelor of Music Education and put all of that knowledge back into the system. Mm -hmm. And so that it all, it kind of compounds and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more enriching for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. That's, wow. That's amazing. I guess that's, that's what really I really great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's what I would say, kind of like using models from other, like what is working for other people outside mm -hmm. of the country, within our province, Atlantic provinces and everything like that as well. Um, what can we do to kind of streamline it for students and make this student experience as valuable as possible to them? Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's incredible. Well, because I'm even thinking I, you know, I, I've lived in very few places, re relatively speaking, so I can't speak to many communities, but I know that like I grew up in Vancouver, which is a much bigger city, and the way that I sort of always understood it there was the high schools were less so streaming you into careers, but more so into universities that were connected to the schools, where, yeah. you know, Vancouver is a lucky place that we have like a billion high schools and a lot of like post-secondary institutions so it would be you know I went to a school in North Vancouver so it was just assumed that you would be streamlined into the university in North Vancouver and it didn't matter what you wanted right. to do that's the university that's right there so why would you not go to that one and you know if you're anywhere in downtown Vancouver well obviously you want to go to UBC because it's UBC and it doesn't matter what your career is yes so, yeah. yeah that's like that's kind of what I grew up knowing was that the school that you were encouraged to go into was more so about just what was nearby and what was convenient and what you know the high schools had a connection with but this seems like a much more logical <laughs> and, <laughs> and useful system <laughs> well and like that's just what's put in place for us as musicians you know what mm -hmm. I mean and you know it applies to people who know what they want to do in high school, which is ridiculous to expect people to do. But, yeah. you know, I fall under that category of like, I was really lucky to know what I wanted before entering the university or yeah. anything like that. Because I feel like it's it's like that in many places where the high schools are directly kind of like pushing students into a certain direction of universities and stuff like that. And then like, all of a sudden you're graduated with a business degree and like, kind of kicking your toes like what do I do now kind of yeah thing. well yeah. And I think even like the thing that that is really impressive to me about this streamline is making it so that high schoolers know that music performance is even a valuable career option yeah you yeah. know oftentimes I feel like there wasn't much encouragement to actually like go off and study music I mean I was really lucky my high school had a huge music program um, and a really great music program. Shout out to Francis Roberts and Diana Chan. What wonderful <laughs> women. Um, Love it. But like, you know, it was a phenomenal, and it still is a phenomenal music program, but so few of the people who do the choirs and bands ever go to music school because it's just never really presented as an option that's yeah. viable. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the reason why it's a viable, I guess, viable option here is because you see evidence of that in the school system. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like your band teacher went through the band program on PEI, went to UPEI, did their music education degree and came back and taught on PEI and now they're happy. Oh, this is an option. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> or even like, oh, this person went through the band program and went to the School of Performing Arts at Holland College and now they are playing literally all over the world like you know what I mean yeah. things like that like and and having these community members and evidence of that even just people who are playing like 
at at a bar in in town you know what I mean and yeah that as like oh this is something that can carry out past this you know past past my high school career yeah so I'm sure as a educator slash future educator slash somebody who has grown up doing music um you've been faced with naysayers or at the very least will be faced with naysayers in the future um so what would you say to someone who just does not understand the benefit of studying music or participating in community music in any way I would tell them to try it out you know what I mean and see what it's all about um you know everything in our education system has value um you know the physical education aspect of it is really important as well as the arts education you know I believe that we should have just as strong theater programs as we do music programs and just as strong of plastic arts programs as we do music programs and gym programs. I really feel that it should, that that our government should invest in that kind of thing to have all of this equal footing for everyone to have equal opportunity to pursue what they would like to do. So to those naysayers, I would just say, like, if you get one, I get one. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's great. Actually, if you don't mind me asking, so um, just because I I know you mentioned that, like, the band program is very strong in PI, and now there's this new stream of the curriculum. But prior to the stream of the curriculum, sorry, prior to the new music curriculum in PI was... Uh, the music education very like band centered was there a lot of like choir or guitar or other types of instrumental stuff going on so that would happen on the basis of the teacher just deciding to do it themselves um okay. so there was some rock education going on um oh, wow. in a smaller community called Montague so there was kind of some education based on rock instruments um based on improvisation and learning bass guitar voice drums that kind of thing um and it was less band centered but that was going on while all of this band stuff was also going on at the same time um which is great you know um so I would say that it really only happened whenever a teacher kind of spoke up and was like I'm gonna start a choir and then they had this choir running as an extracurricular thing for a few years and then they eventually convinced their principal to have it have it count as credit towards their high school, you know, diploma or things like that as well. So yeah, it's definitely just good teachers being good people, doing good things and making these things happen for sure. Wow. But previously, definitely very band centered, teaching through repertoire. And it's still like that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is also a good thing. Um, but to have multiple opportunities for music making in multiple different situations for students is also, I think that's the ideal thing for me. Yeah. yeah. Do you think in your sort of ideal dream uh, public education music teacher job, would you, are, is there stuff like outside of the, the band curriculum that you would really want to like implement or that you'd be really excited to try out? Well, my... Okay, so I'll tell you, like, the best case scenario, if, like, nothing mattered, money wasn't a thing, numbers weren't a thing, like, and it was just, like, this is what my dream scenario would look like. There would be, like, at least two music teachers um, Mm -hmm. out of school. Um, One of them specializing in instrumental music, so band, um, and one of them specializing in styles of popular performance. And between the two of them having a choral program also running and then also having, you know, between the two of them and having all of that power between like two music teacher brains colliding, like that is a powerful thing to happen is to have someone kind of collaborate to collaborate with Um, and having arts coffee houses at the school, um, having all of these really cool extracurricular stuff. Like whenever I was in high school, outside of band we also had these um arts coffee house kind of things like noon hour performances so every friday throughout the semester there would be people would sign up to perform and we would set up a stage in the band room and 
everybody would come sit down during lunchtime and people would go up and sing their songs, whatever style it might be, right? So kind of creating those organic opportunities and then the curricular opportunities and then having someone to kind of mash brains with and things like that. So having like, that's definitely my dream scenario is Mm -hmm. like, it's not just me doing it. Like I want to collaborate with everyone involved in my actual dream scenario. There's probably like five music teachers. at Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there, like there are like three or four French teachers in a school, like things like that. Right. And kind of having it so that everybody participates, whether they are signed up for band or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that will happen, but I'm but, hoping. You know, it'd be Fingers nice. Cross always. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> I um yeah. it was it was really funny actually. Yesterday I, I was hanging out with uh my girlfriend and a couple of friends. We went to the beach and we were talking about um like uh my girlfriend and one of our other friends kept referring to their pipe dreams and things that they had as a pipe dream as a kid. And one of the other friends said, oh, what does that expression mean? I've never heard the phrase pipe dream. And we were like, oh, you know, a pipe dream is like something that you like, you hope will happen, but you think is like probably never going to happen. It's pretty unrealistic. And they were like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it, that expression. There are a lot of things I thought were pipe dreams in high school that I've done now. Yeah. And they were yeah. like, and I was like, wow, <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that's so that's lovely. Wonderful. Yeah, that is actually quite lovely. And I can attest that the same thing. Cause, like because when you said pipe dream I'm in the same position like what what is that you know mm-hmm. and as you were saying that I, I got the same kind of feeling of like wait those things have happened for me though is is a pipe dream yeah. just manifesting I don't know Th- yeah. that's a great question Ooh, I like that <laughs> but yeah I, I think it's like with you know with like the music education stuff like who knows like maybe it seems really unrealistic to us now but hopefully that will be the case and I mean, again, yeah. like I come from the the privileged big city background of like <laughs> most of the schools uh, in Vancouver had like separate choir and band instructors. And so, mm-hmm. you know, at the very least, I think that it is super realistic that that could start being implemented in schools across Canada at some point, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, but let's get more in there. Why do we need four French teachers and one music teacher? Come on, let's, let's balance right? those scales. Yeah. And I don't mean by cutting, I mean by adding, to be clear. <laughs> don't get the wrong idea, government. For the record. <laughs> For yeah. the record, I mean that only in the additive sense. <laughs> yes. I Yeah, like, it's it's just wild, like, the lengths that band teachers go through, like, go to to sustain their program. Like, I don't know if they have this in any other province, but I know that this is, like, almost strictly a PEI thing that happens. We have this thing called early morning band where Mm -hmm. oh yeah (laughs) and an extra hour the teacher donates an extra hour of their time and the students also donate an extra hour of their time to achieve like uh one rehearsal a week with the full band. Otherwise it's like kids in the classroom where like some of these kids are being pulled out of science class. You know what I mean? Like, like being pulled out of other classes to come to band class. I've had my students come to me and be like, like, Mix McPhail, I'm so sorry. Like, I have a big science project that I have to do in class today, so I can't come to band. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what is going on here? Yeah. And I guess that's wild. It's wild. Like, it's absolutely wild on top of like an extra hour donated by everybody involved in band at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyways, it, it's just wild. Like whenever I was in school, I like at all of the band students were in one class. So nobody was pulled out of the class to go to band. But what created problems with that is that one teacher got this class of like golden kids, you know, and the other teacher got this class of of uh, behavioral issues and, and classroom management things that were going mm. on, right? So I guess the point was to kind of spread kids all the good kids out you know and <laughs> spread them out across the classrooms wow. and so so that the classroom dynamics were quote-unquote like fair among teachers mm. um when they were outside huh. of the music classroom right and 
I don't know if it worked or not. Like I, I haven't been in the system long enough to really understand if this is a good idea or not. Mm-hmm. But you know, then kids are being pulled out of the classes to come to class, and it's like, where is my student? Oh, they're in math class right now. Okay, that makes sense. Things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating. I, I've, I've never heard of a system like that, but. Yeah, I mean, I have zero experience on the teacher end of the school system, so I have no idea if that is something that, huh, yeah, I don't know, that's fascinating. It would work, like, having had, okay, something else that is new in the EI school system that is not, like, music education related necessarily is they're offering this, like, one period a week for students of a skills development class. So in the skills development class, it includes home ec, it includes industrial arts. Um, Now it is also including music. The problem is, is you're having all of these non-band students come into your classroom and you have like no curriculum for it. Right. Wow. And so like, am I teaching music appreciation? Am I teaching Mm -hmm. film music? Am I teaching, like, what am I teaching? You know what I mean? Like, am I teaching, am I supposed to like teach these kids instruments? So it all kind of depends on your principal and stuff like that. Cause I know some schools at some schools, one teacher got a bunch of classical guitars and started a guitar class with her students. And this class isn't for credit, by the way, it's not marked and or graded. Ah, at all. So, um, so there are some students who show up and they know, they all know that it's not graded yeah, and they so show up I... and they, they don't care because they, they didn't sign up for music. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, so anyway, the teacher started a guitar class and it was really successful for her. But then another teacher that I know went to their principal and asked for guitars and was denied guitars, right? And so now wow. they're stuck just like teaching these kids kind of like, like everybody's kind of just like pulling lessons out of thin air, like just, just teaching them whatever and just hoping for some kind of response from mm. the students, right? So it's, there's... A lot of shifting around going on on the yeah. EI right now, <laughs> right? Like a, a good way to do that. Like I think a music appreciation class for non-music students is a great thing as long as they can opt into doing it mm-hmm. if they'd like to, right? Yeah. So absolutely. I've experienced a lot of behavioral um, behavioral things that I've had to learn how to deal with, like during my teaching placement and my training and everything like that. But mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Thank you for the yeah. insight. It's really, no it's really problem. interesting to know because you don't realize how different it can be province to province until you actually start talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, I'm, that's another thing I'm excited for is meeting other music educators in, in Newfoundland and kind of scoping the situation to see what it's really like out there, you know? Yeah. Cause like we were talking about earlier, like you can look at the curriculum all you want, but you have like no idea what it looks like in the school system it is I'll tell you right now very very depending on the school it's like you said it's you know what is the teacher what type of teachers do they have and what are their specialties and you know how much unpaid work are they willing to put in to (laughs) make a band program yeah and and these this varied experience is great like it's awesome for students to be able to learn music outside of a band setting if that's genuinely like not what they jive with you know Mm -hmm. that being said like a point that was brought up when this new curriculum was being made was like what's gonna happen to my kid if I move from city to city you know yeah if there is a like what what's gonna happen with these skills classes like say there's a skills class in knitting you know what I mean what's gonna happen when that kid moves to another school like gets picked up by their family and moves to another school and there's no knitting skills class anymore and their skills class that they've been working on for a whole semester or even years right it what happens when that skills class is pottery instead right so it's good to have the varied stuff but like is it cohesive throughout all of the schools is there that equal opportunity and that equal footing right mm-hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the insight. Genuinely, it's really, really interesting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so passionate about this. I like, this is the stuff that keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like in bed and I'm like, 
what what is society gonna do about this you know what I mean like that that's my thing that I am up thinking about is like is is what what are these students really benefiting from with this kind of system that we're starting anyway yeah I'm all fired up about it now <laughs> I'm sorry to get you all fired up um because we're ending um <laughs> Well, good thing we only have one more question and then you can relax. Um, good, good. So as uh, as our, our sort of wrap up question, um, if and this is a, another little cheesy one, but I kind of like it. Um, if you could tell young musicians who maybe are actively studying music or participating in community ensembles or just playing music for fun at home, one thing or multiple things, what would that be? Keep playing play anything literally anywhere anytime anyhow just keep on doing it like uh you know like seek out a a individual teacher seek out other performance opportunities in group settings even if it's above or below your playing level right just keep playing whatever you play keep playing and play more stuff play more instruments play other styles yeah just do it just do more (laughs) <laughs> whatever it is do more of it yeah <laughs> I love that so much that is fantastic that's <laughs> wonderful advice <laughs> thank you thank you um well we truly are wrapping up now um and before I give my my little outro did you have any uh like I don't know upcoming projects or social medias or things you want to plug now is the time <laughs> I guess I'll plug my Instagram so uh my Instagram my tuba Instagram is olive dot tuba on instagram so if you want to check me out you can i post some practice videos i post some performance videos and just generally what my what my tuba journey is up to at the time uh i guess that's what i would plug for now anyways (laughs) hit me up if you want private lessons yeah yeah (laughs) amazing well thank you so much olive it's been really great chatting with you today thank you And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Music for All, a Coalition for Music Education in Canada podcast. I have been Christina, they have been Olive McPhail, and here's hoping you add a little music to your life today. Goodbye! Thanks to our major funder, the NAM Foundation, as well as to our major sponsors, Yamaha, Longa McQuaid, and Cosmo Music. Please check out the Coalition for Music Education in Canada at coalitioncanada.ca. That's coalitioncanada.ca to find out more about us. Thank you.